Rafael, welcome back to Houston. Thank it is you. such a great Thank pleasure you. to see you. You were an inspiration when you were here and learning all the things that you have told us about uh, what you have done for Guatemala uh, has been a further inspiration. Great. Thank you. I want to ask you about your time in Houston um, and what it did to prepare you for what you have become, which is such an inspiration to all of us. Well, uh, like I mentioned before, I, I think I'm, I feel very, very lucky that in life I met wonderful people. First of all, my mother was a big inspiration. She was a school teacher, and that showed me first that education was the key of success in life. Uh, no other thing can give you more satisfaction than education. And uh, that for me was a big, big revelation. Then I was able to contact Dr. Becky when I was in high school because his life came out in a magazine and inspired me what he was doing. I don't know why called my attention. And I wrote to him and he, I was more amazed that he wrote me back. I mean, I was a 14-year-old kid from Guatemala at that time. And then when I finished medical school, I was able to be in touch with uh, Bobby Kennedy, a great uh, thinker of this country. Unfortunately, his life was very short, but he was an inspiration yes. for human kindness and justice in the yes. world. Yes. So those two guys really influenced me a lot. And I decided to come to Houston. I was lucky enough that I was uh, accepted with Dr. Reggie to come here in 1969. And uh, I was an intern. At that time, I met Dr. Uh, Dr. Reggie and Dr. Howe. Dr. Jimmy Howe was my first rotation. Uh, you know you were with Dr. Howe. He's a great guy great surgeon and I was inspired by him too and I found out that there was a great training center uh, the thing I saw is a lot of work ethics I mean people work and work and work uh, to care of people one thing I learned from Dr. Vake is that he always told you to know about the name of your patient uh, who was the relative uh, how many relatives they have to know not just the disease but also to recognize the patient as a human being uh, and that, I kept that in my mind all the time, that medicine is you know, just a disease or a process, is to treat humans and to contact and take care of the well-being of humans. From when they are born, when they grow, when they get sick, and when they die. Even the death should be accompanied by the physician. And that's our mission, to have a better life for the people. Now, it's... it's um, very, very inspiring to see that um, from a very early time in your training, you already made a commitment to do the kind of work in Guatemala that has since grown into what it is today. What inspired you to do that? You could so easily have settled down here in the United States and uh, uh, had a very comfortable career and retirement but instead, you chose a different path. Uh, tell me about that. Well, like, like I said, uh, life is not just uh, material things, money. I mean, it's nice to have money, and it's nice to drive a nice car, but that's not the whole thing in life. life is, there are more things that are in life. Kind of the satisfaction that your career that is help people really means something. And I come from a country with a lot of problems, a lot of poverty, a lot of inequity. Uh, my family comes from an area where there's a lot of poor people. So I knew that there was a lot of people with a lot of means. I came here, wonderful medical center. Uh, I saw people with a lot of money and uh, a lot of material things. But I knew there was a big group of people that couldn't be taken care of. And I remember very well, I did a coronary bypass on a banker in Guatemala. And he asked me, see, what happened if my chauffeur that has no money had the same thing I had? I said, well, he'll die unless you pay for it to come here. To, to Houston. And uh, he, he got all shook up about it and he organized a team. It's not just my work. Uh, there's a lot of people behind me that helped me to develop this in Guatemala. And what I wanted to do is to mimic what we have here, do it in Guatemala too, not just for the rich people that could pay for it, but for everybody, because the majority of people couldn't pay. So we created a system, a social system, to have this paid by the government, by the Social Security, and by insurances to establish a cardiac unit. Uh, with the limitations that we have, but that we can do everything. And it's a big satisfaction. So I decided to go to Guatemala. 
I mean, when you're born, my family is there, my friends are there, and always attract me to go back. Even when I finished my training, I was ready to go back. And Dr. Benke told me, don't go yet. Because he said, you're not prepared yet. You're not mature enough to do what I did in Houston, because that's what I want to do. I think I want to do in Guatemala what you did in Houston. He said, you're not ready yet. You have to work more. So I had to work 38 more years to feel comfortable that I could do a little bit of what they yes. did in Houston doing Guatemala. So, uh, and I was lucky enough that I had great friends, friends like you. You were my resident, and my partner, and, and my colleague, and people like you are the people that make you be better. And I always said you have to surround with people better than you all the time. And that's a thing that the students and people in medicine had to remember. Surround, if you surround with stupid people, you become stupid too. But if you surround with people that are intelligent and better than you, then you're, you're, you grow. You grow too. Well, you are unusual in many respects. And one of the respects uh, in which you are highly unusual is that you have held high political office in addition to being such an accomplished cardiothoracic surgeon, educator, <coughs> and uh, charitable person. How did that experience change you? What drove you? What put you into it? And how did the experience change you? Well, I always liked the political aspect. And when I was here in Houston, I used to operate a lot of politicians from all over the world. And it was interesting to talk to them and see their view and see that they had the power to change things. And some guys did it, some guys didn't. And they learned also that the projects that you do are long-term projects. In politics, you cannot change things in a fast way. Unfortunately, the people want you to change things in seconds, and you can do it. It takes years and, and sometimes decades. But politics, I always was interested in what was going on in the political world, but I never went into a political study or went into political science. I did take the course of government in, 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 in Boston, and uh, it was interesting to see how people made decisions for people. And when I was ready to come back, well, I was very comfortable here. I, I mean, you know that I was, we were doing great. And uh, uh, in an interview on TV in Guatemala, they asked me, why don't you stay in the States? You could make a lot of money, live there well. But I guess the money is not everything. You had to do for people what you need to do. And when I was in 2006 ready to go back to Guatemala, a group of politicians approached me and they said, we've been thinking about you. We did some, some polls and in the polling, they like you're a very popular person here in Guatemala. I think you can be a great candidate for the, the executive branch in Guatemala. And I looked at the data and that was very interesting. So I said, well, this is something that will be interesting to see. Of course, you cannot go to school to become president or vice president. You just had to. Uh, I knew that I knew administration, I knew the model here, so I applied what I learned in medicine in the government, which is to look at a problem, to study the problem, to consult with people, and then make a decision and take risks. You have to take risks. In life, you cannot do everything 100% safe. You have to take some risks in life and take a decision and back up your risks. And if it's a bad risk, don't do it. If it's a relatively small risk, then you do it. And that's what I did in government. I used to tease when they were in cabinet. I told them, said, you, you're acting very slow. You have to make a decision. You have to be a surgeon. You have to make a decision. Let's do it. The risk is 5%, 95% will do OK. Let's do it. And I used to tell the president, let's do it. And, and that's what really was the work that we did in government. And it was a great learning experience. Uh, mainly, I met a lot of people, good people, bad people, fat people, skinny people, and uh, everywhere. And uh, really was a great thing to talk to different people and that's around yourself again with intelligent people and good people and that saves you from doing wrong things too because people that will tell you your mistakes are your best friends uh, I learned that people that tell you that you're great and your speech was superb I'd rather say so your speech was terrible next time you better change it that, that was people that I really appreciated in government those are your better friends. And so for me, it was a great experience. I understood government better. And it gave me the opportunity to talk to a lot of politicians in the world. Mm. Being vice president of Guatemala, I had a chance to go to Washington, to go to France, to go to Germany, Russia, and meet the great politicians that you see in magazines that are just like you and I. They think exactly like you and I. They have just bigger problems, but 
but they do the same thing we do. So it was a good thing to talk to a lot of people and uh, see circumstances that you can learn and apply it to your country. Well, I'm embarrassed to admit that I've never been to Guatemala, but I look forward to visiting yeah, you over there, and I look forward to a growing collaboration between Houston Methodist and the DeBakey Heart Center and the various uh, healthcare organizations that you have uh, championed over there. I appreciate it. I feel part of this family, I feel yeah. part of this institution. Yeah. This is my house, too, so yeah. I feel like we can go from here to Guatemala every day if we want to. Yeah. Rafael, it's such a great pleasure to Good. see you. Nice Thank see you so much.